And I think that was one of the conversations that we had around the fact that, hey, they, they, they do give opportunities to the right businesses. Um, can we expand a little bit on that? I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. I'm a, I mean, I, I've seen more and more independent brands getting into the Coles and the Woolworths of the world. It's much, uh, much more than it used to be and many more than it used to be. Um, can you run me through their shift over the last, say, five years or even two years or three years? Um, because I, I sense a lot more in, um, independent products in, on their shelves. Mate, absolutely. And I think it's a sign of the times as well. We, we, we saw some entrance of, you know, the German retailer that come to town and bought a very different model to our country, which was this private label, um, you know, set price sort of thing. And, and that's all great. But I think what's happened is, you know, you've got the you've got the Woolworths and the Coles in the world, and they've realised to really grow category and and take on new segments and and you know build out some of these segments you see in health and pharmacy and other specialties. You actually need brands to do that and to tell that story. So um, they're definitely yeah. I've heard some. I've actually heard some. It's it's fascinating when I hear some of these these myths and wives' tales and whispers getting around. You know about how all these detrimental things can happen if you get it wrong, and and it's actually not that. You know, it's just you, you you just can't underestimate the scale. So, you know, you're talking about, you know, some of these retailers have a thousand plus doors and, you know, a lot of moving parts, a lot of products, a lot of things going in and out of the network. So I think you really have to understand that because their business model is, is quite a simple one, right? It's, it's sell product. Um, the one thing you don't want to be doing is going out of stock. So I guess there's always that balancing pendulum, I feel, that, you know, they want to take risks. They want to trial new things. You know, um, as an example, Woolworths is, you know, working very closely on clustering ranging. So something they never did before. Now now they can go identify through their data and go, well, hang on, guys, we sell more uh, high-end performance coffee in this cluster of two, 300 stores. How about we double down on a couple of brands that make sense there versus there might be a demographic where they're more budget, you know, um, cheaper coffees and, and things like that where it wouldn't work. So they have the ability to do that now, which gives them that testing platform. But th there's always a risk element. And it goes back to what I said before. I think by mitigating that risk and showing, you know, um, back the brand, give us the space on shelf, that's sometimes the easiest part. How are you going to pull it off the shelf, right? So the retailer has all their assets and all their, you know, catalogs and all these different points and stuff like that. But I think, you know, how's that brand going to pull it off there? But they're definitely, um, you know, they definitely are open to trying new things. And I think it's just um, a matter of being being relevant, being seen there. One of the um, one of the little tips that I can give everyone that we like to use is when you do engage with these retailers, we we like to get links to our, um, and this is a little inside mate, uh, knowledge <laughs> that we like to play for all of our guys. Um, we like to include a, a link to our website or our Instagram because uh, buyers are consumers as well. We start to forget that, but the retailers are consumer as well. And you got to remember like a 25, 30 year old buyer in, in like a particular health food category probably is a customer and they have Instagram and they have social media and they have all those things. So um, we like to, to share mm -hmm. with them because, you know, part of our marketplace is we have a beautiful Instagram. We've got amazing flat lights. Our product is, you know, delicious. So by the time we do that, and, and naturally we all, you know, probably got all got an idea on how um, targeted marketing works. So then all of a sudden your brand keeps popping up in the feed and, and that helps, you know, when you roll into the meeting and they go, Chris, mate, we see you everywhere. What's going on? You know? <laughs> so, but I think, um, yeah, mate, they're, 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 they're genuine consumers of product. They genuinely want to, to grow with brands. Um, their only challenge is, you know, they're incredibly time poor. They don't have room for everyone. And they're just trying to cut through and go, okay, cool. You know, if it's a collagen product, who does have the best collagen? What, why? Why is the customer resonating with that? What does it look like? And then also, where can we take that next? You know, let's not pick a one-trick pony. Let's pick a brand that's got some scope to play in two, three categories. Maybe we pop up in medicinal maybe we're then over in vitamins maybe we've got a, a dairy chilled juice play who knows where we go you know the, the sky's the limit when you start building a customer base but i think mate uh, it's an exciting place to be right now i think and you've nailed it is that these retailers are really keen to to support and just be a part of the journey and the growth and you know um, build out what it is that our you know some of these categories look like 